about 5 to 10 percent of all colorectal cancers are caused by a genetic mutation, a change that can be passed on from parent to child. A number of screening tests are available to find abnormal growths in the colon polyps, which potentially might cause colorectal cancer. If you have a family history of colorectal cancer, we encourage you to speak to a genetic counselor, regardless of whether you would like to undergo genetic testing. We can help you understand and manage your cancer risk with or without the use of genetic tests. Hello and welcome to Healthy Connections. I'm Annetta Wilson, your host. Healthy Connections is a show dedicated to exploring a wide variety of topics, from prenatal care to Alzheimer's disease. And we do so with a wide variety of perspectives, from the professionals that help treat the syndromes to everyday people like you and me, who may have personal experience dealing with these topics on a firsthand basis. Stay tuned for Healthy Connections. Dr. Sriram Maripatla is from the UF Health Cancer Center Orlando at Orlando Health, and he's here to start the conversation about colon cancer. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Annette. Mm -hmm. What is it that we don't know about colon cancer? There's so many stories, myths, things floating around. What do you want people to know about this disease? Yeah, let me start out with uh, the basics about colon cancer. Colon is an important organ in our system. It's about five feet in length. And the most, the common cancer what we encounter in colon and rectum is colon cancer. I think um, this is a very, uh, this is the third most common cancer in the United States and third most common cause of death in both men and women. Why is it, why is it in the top three? I mean, you don't want any of them to be any, any ranking, but why is that, why is it so high? Um, let me um, start off with screening. I think the Colon cancer happens, 90% uh, of the colon cancers happen in patients above 50 years. Unfortunately, only 59% of Americans get their colonoscopy. So it occurs most often in people 50 years and or about, older, mm -hmm. and they don't get screened. They don't get screened. So is this preventable? It is preventable. Okay. It is a preventable cancer. The one of the best ways to prevent is to get screened. And what is that? What is the screening process? Screening ha can be done in, uh, in uh, many ways. The most uh, common way which I recommend is colonoscopy. Okay. There are other ways to do it. There are other easier ways. Uh, I could say flexible sigmoidoscopy. It does not cover the whole colon. There is st looking for blood in the stool. Mm -hmm. That does not catch all the cancers. There is a barium enema, we call it, which is... Uh, okay, so the colonoscopy, the mm -hmm. flexible sigmoidoscope, which is basically a, a camera. Camera. And then looking for blood in the stool. In the stool. Mm -hmm. And then a barium enema. Enema. Mm -hmm. None of them sound like anything anyone would want to do. True. But that being said, it, when it comes to a momentary uh, discomfort or saving your life, let's tip the scales in saving your life. We've heard that you need to have a colonoscopy every 10 years. Why such a long time span? That's a good question. Typically, colon cancer is of four stages. Stage one, it starts as a polyp. Cancer could be in the polyp. Stage two is the cancer moving through the layers of the colon. And stage three is after it moves to the layers of the colon, it could go to the lymph nodes. And from the lymph nodes, it could go to the lungs, bone, liver, it becomes stage four. So it's not just at a certain point, it's not just confined to the colon. Yeah, at a certain point, if you don't catch it early. So all the cancers in the colon starts as a polyp. It takes and about- a polyp is just a tiny little growth? Growth, it's okay. a tiny little growth in the colon. It starts off from a mutation within the colon. And within a series of mutations in this little polyp over 
eight to 10 years, it could turn into a cancer. So as oncologists, we recommend getting screened at least once every 10 years after the age of 50 so that we don't miss these polyps turning into cancer. And the polyps are again different types. Not all polyps turn into cancer. Okay. There is a polyp called hyperplastic polyp, which is probably a good polyp. So it does not turn into cancer. There is tubular polyp. There is a villus adenoma polyp. Tubular adenoma or villus adenoma. These villus are the adenoma? Mm -hmm. These what are, is that? This is a genetic component within the polyp which it acquires and changes into one of the dangerous kind. So it let's talk about that genetic component. Mm -hmm. um, how big of a factor is genetics in colon cancer? We hear about the connection between mm -hmm. breast cancer and mm -hmm. genetics. Yes. What about colon cancer and genetics? So about 5 to 10 percent of all the colon cancer are inherited. So 90% are, we call them sporadic or by chance. Mm -hmm. So this five to 10% of, of the colon cancer, the most important one is Lynch syndrome, we call it Lynch, or hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer. It accounts for up to one in every 35 colon cancer patients. How do you screen someone for that if it's genetic? That's, a, that's, that's the most important advancement we had made in the past two years. Okay. What we are doing in every colon cancer patients we see now, we screen them automatically for a genetic component. <clears throat> so if we have that come back positive, we do additional tests. So hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer, they not only, how do we screen them even before they come, us, come to us is, it's easy. If they say, I have one family member who has colon cancer, Okay. That's that, a red flag That's a red flag that increases your risk two to three times. Okay. If I have two, two or more in the family with colon cancer or breast, then it increases your risk three to six times. So you, you talked about screening for people 50 plus. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing cancers, colon cancers, for people who have a genetic component mm -hmm. at younger ages? Yes, especially when they have a uh, inherited form of cancer, which we find out in a 50 plus year old, we tell him, you, you need to tell your family members to have their screening start at age 20, as early as 20 years old. And that way we are able to find cancers in them much earlier uh, than we used to. And uh, that helps a lot. What gives you hope as an oncologist when you look at um, where we've come in terms of the research and new treatments, what what makes you hopeful? It makes me very hopeful with the personalized medicine, I would say. The reason is, in the past, we used to treat the cancer as a whole. Now we take the tumor, we look at the tumor genetics within the tumor, because a colon cancer in one patient could be different in a colon cancer in another patient. So we are looking at the tumor itself and finding any gene alterations it has and targeting that gene so that we have come a long way. So it, it is more like a one-on-one, -on -one personalized, mm. targeted treatment. So that we, uh, we that is facilitated by a, by uh, new generation techniques, by doing doing the gene testing within the tumor, and we do get, we are getting better and extending the lifespan of our patients. So very quickly, what are the signs of colon cancer, and what? When do we know something is not right? What should we look for? So the symptoms could be very subtle. The, it could be a mild abdominal, abdominal pain, like okay. crampy abdominal pain. It could be stool in the, uh, uh, blood in the stool. It could be diarrhea alternating with constipation or change in the caliber of the stool. It could become pencil thin. So a lot of patients think this, this is probably normal, but these symptoms extend for a long time, could lead to other symptoms like fatigue. What I mean is if you lose blood in the stool for some time, you get anemic, so you are losing weight without, without any intention. Mm -hmm. You are getting more tired and tired. So right away, you seek help from the doctor. So don't wait for, until the symptoms get worse. And also, this can hold true for even a 20-year-old. Like I just said, even a 20-year-old could develop a colon cancer. So when in doubt, call your doctor. When in doubt, call. Yeah, okay. don't hesitate. <laughs> yeah, I think that that is probably the best last word that we could give. Dr. Matty Potler, thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> we will be right back. Don't go away.
Amanda Evans Clark is here to share her story and tell us all about her husband, Joe. Uh, Amanda, first, our condolences for the loss of your husband. Thank you. But you are keeping his legacy alive and your, jour your journey with him through uh, cancer alive. Tell us how this whole thing progressed. Um, you know, Joe and I started writing about his diagnosis. He was diagnosed two days before his 28th birthday and two months before our wedding. Um, as a former journalist, I saw the story there. Mm -hmm. I just wished it wasn't my story. Wasn't your story, And yeah. immediately we felt like people need to know what you really go through when you're going through chemotherapy, what it's like to sit in a doctor's office and get these 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 diagnoses and this information and we just started using um, our blog our writing as a way of sharing that as a way of venting as a way of talking about it and um, you know he just passed away and to th now go back and read what he wrote talk about a what gift. Did he write? Tell us what he wrote. He would write about um, some really hard stuff to read the struggle mm -hmm. um, how hard it was for him uh, to be up in bed and hear me downstairs with the baby, to know he couldn't be out with his friends. Um, he talked about wanting to make it to his daughter's birthday parties and dances. How do you explain to a baby these things? Mm -hmm. uh, he would write about just really honest things that I don't, I think people are afraid to say sometimes. What do you say to people who don't know what to say to you? They, they want to, but they don't know how to comfort you or what to say? Saying something is better than saying the wrong thing. Okay. Just say something. Say, I'm probably gonna say the wrong thing right now, but I want you to know my heart breaks for you. Um, be aware that that person is hurting, because I think there's nothing that can make you feel more alone than feeling like the world is going on and their lives are just fine and you're watching your own little world kind of crumble. Did you get mad? Oh yeah, I'm still mad sometimes. Yeah, how do you handle that? Writing, writing helps me a lot. Um, I wanna help other people. I look at our daughter, I feel like um, the pity party can last for a little bit and then- Then you gotta get you gotta in the business. Get your work boots on. Now Joe's cancer was genetic. His, his dad also had um, colorectal cancer. So mm -hmm. when Joe was diagnosed at such a young age, they immediately went to something called Lynch syndrome. Um, it's, genetic testing is pretty new. And so we had some trouble finding out, you know, if it was, if it wasn't, but when your dad is so young and diagnosed, then you are, they believe that um, it is genetic and something called Lynch syndrome. So mm -hmm. that was kind of scary. Tell us about your blog, you know, uh, I asked you what he wrote and the two of you decided to chronicle your journey for other people. What, what impact has that had? It's unbelievable. We have more than 17,000 followers now. And give us the name of the blog. Cocktails and Chemo. Cocktails and Chemo. And okay. uh, people write to us. Name. Thank you. Well, you know, <laughs> we used to like to have a dirty martini together and that was our, that was our thing. And okay. we said we've traded in our, our dirty martinis for chemo dates, but we'll take it. Yeah. And people write to us from across the country and they say, I, I, you're so inspirational. I can't believe, thank you for writing this. Thank you for sharing this. Uh, thank you to Joe. Uh, a lot of patients, wives and husbands would say, I'm always wondering how my spouse is feeling, how my father, my mother, and for you to express what it really feels like to be mm -hmm. going through this. Because you are going through this mm -hmm. with, um, with the person who has the cancer. You are. It's the whole family. What, has, what was that like for you as a caregiver? I mean, you had a husband who you knew was dying. You had a baby. You, How did you handle that? I mean, you had to, mm -hmm. but what was that like for you? Hard. Mm -hmm. And it is, uh, you have to lower yourself to a, a place to allow yourself to ask for help. We had to move my mom in and his mom in for a while mm -hmm. because it just got too hard. And I think some people you're afraid to ask for help. Um, I had no choice. Yeah. It just got too hard. And you have a lot of guilt, guilt because you have to take care of your baby, mm -hmm. but you worry that you're not spending what precious time you have with your husband. That was hard. Um, but we would try and put the baby to bed and, and sit and talk. And, and Joe took being a dad so seriously 
that even with a chemo pack on, he was getting up in the middle of the night to change diapers and mm. stuff. So, yeah. I, I mean. It sounds like he was a great he guy. He just, he wanted to be a dad with everything that he had. Well, he's left his daughter, mm -hmm. a beautiful she legacy. She looks just like him <laughs> and acts like him too. And acts <laughs> like him too. What's next for you? You know, Joe left me a letter um, that I found after he died. And in it, he said, I want you to keep, he's, keep going, keep writing. You're helping people. And I hope to, um, to take that and turn it into a foundation where I could continue to help cancer caregivers. And um, I think help myself in the process. Yeah. But uh, every time I start to feel down, that's what I go back to is that letter. He said, uh, you know, don't lose your glam. <laughs> I don't know how many, hus how many husbands glam. say that. Still got your he glam. said, stay, you know, stay motivated and keep going. Like keep, keep writing because you're making a huge difference. Well, I have to concur. And you. you made a huge difference just by being here and Thank being you. so candid about your journey, Thank your you. journey with him and your daughter Mira. We have to tell everyone her mm -hmm. name. And the fact that you are a journalist, I think, was a kind of a blessing in disguise it to is. keep this moving forward. Thank you so much Thank you. for being here and sharing your story. We'll be back right after this. Colorectal cancer is one of the leading causes of cancer deaths, and it is by and large preventable and treatable. We hope you have taken note of our stories, especially Amanda, and take care of yourself for your loved ones. Get tested, get your colonoscopies. We want you to be around to have more healthy connections. I'm Annetta Wilson. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.